Lula and the Sea Monster. Welcome back to Hedgehog Quarters Story Time. As many of you know, I live in Canada on the very west coast on a little island called Vancouver Island. So if you're looking at a map of Canada, I'm way, way over on the very left. And as we live on an island where Savannah is surrounded by the ocean, it's a chilly day and it's super windy, so I'm sure it's a loud background, but I thought it'd be fun to introduce a few books to you by the ocean about the sea. So today's story we're going to read is Lula and the Sea Monster. I hope you enjoy it and I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a quick little view of the ocean, okay? Enjoy the story! lived in an old house on the beach with her parents. She loved looking for things that washed up on the sand and watching the animals that lived in the rock pools. None of that would last much longer. In a few days, Lula and her family would have to move. Their home was going to be torn down to make way for a huge highway that would run along the coast. Early one morning, Lula packed some sandwiches and took her bucket and spade. She went for a walk along the beach, combing for treasures while she still could. Further down the shore, she noticed a seagull snapping at something in a small rock pool. Lula chased the seagull away. Then she scooped up the tiniest creature in her bucket. He curled around Lula's finger, happy to have been rescued. Look how little you are, said Lula. You're hardly bigger than a bean. Oh, that's what I'll call you, Bean. Bean seemed much too small to look after himself in the deep wide ocean, so Lula put him in a larger rock pool with plenty of crevices to hide from hungry seagulls. She gave Bean a sandwich from her backpack and Bean gobbled it up. Lula spent the whole day with her new friend. It's getting late, Lula told Bean, but I'll be back tomorrow. Then she headed for home. Lula woke up early the next morning, made three extra sandwiches, and hurried along the beach to see her new friend. But the tiny creature she had left in the rock pool had grown overnight. Now Bean was too big for the pool. Lula would have to find him a new home. So she scooped Bean up in her bucket, though he hardly fit, and dragged the bucket to a larger pool. Lula gave Bean all of the sandwiches she'd brought, even her own. Lula stayed as long as she could, and they played until sunset. It was getting harder to say goodbye. The next day, Lula packed all the food she could carry, stuffed it in a bedsheet, and dragged it to Bean's pool. Bean had grown even bigger. There was no way Lula could carry him now, so Lula lured Bean to an extra large rock pool with the food she'd brought. They spent hours of fun together, and it was the greatest day two friends could have. When it was time to go home, Lula felt terribly sad. Soon she would have to move away and leave Bean forever. The next morning, Lula felt miserable as she packed her things. She was already missing Bean a great deal. So Lula put some pickles, potatoes, and crackers in a box and set off to see Bean one last time. But Bean wasn't in his pool. She couldn't find him anywhere. Lula sat beside the empty rock pool for ages, but she never got the chance to say goodbye. On moving day, Lula watched her mom and dad pack the last of their belongings into their car. They looked as sad as she felt. Then came the roar of bulldozers. Lula, her parents called, it's time for us to go. But Lula wouldn't go. She couldn't. This was their home and not just her family's. This stretch of beach was home to millions of creatures, creatures like her friend Bean. Lula marched over to the bulldozers. I'm not going anywhere, she shouted. The men laughed. I mean it, Lula yelled. But the bulldozers crept forward, puffing black smoke into the air. It was no use. Lula turned to get one last look at her house. And there was Bean, bigger than ten elephants. He curled around Lula's home the way he'd curled around her finger the first day they met. The men stopped laughing and raced away, leaving their bulldozers behind. 
Ula still lives in her house with her parents, and there is no highway on the beach. Of course, the bulldozers came back, three more times actually, but each time Bean chased them away. Lula still walks along the sand every day, searching for interesting things and animals that need looking after, and most days Bean swims along in the shallows. They couldn't be happier. The End